All right, welcome to today's upgrade video. We're gonna be switching out this EG4 3000 for the EG4 6000. All right, well, that was super easy. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Just kidding, we're actually gonna show you how we do it. So let's get to unboxing this bad boy. All right, pretty exciting. We just got this in the mail. Well, I actually got in the mail last week, but now we get to do this. Little cut, cut. Well, we got cardboard. Oh, hey, that's the that's your template, I think. Not 100% sure. Yeah, that's your template. Look at that. It's got your your holes punched into the cardboard to mark where all your screws go. That's going to be pretty handy for some people. Probably not for me because I'm just going to slap it on there and throw some screws on it because, as you can see, we're still in the middle of the remodel. So this is going to be a temporary system still rolling around. Good sturdy packaging. Well, there's our Wi-Fi dongle, looks like. So interesting, this doesn't have an antenna on it like this one. A little more compact, too. That's going to be cool. So I like these myself so I can monitor it with, with Wi-Fi. But from what I understand, if you don't want to be hooked to Wi-Fi, you don't need to hook that up. and You can do everything manually. Okay, so we've got our some kind of communication cable. Another cable. I'll have to figure out what, what's what there. Structure manual. Oh, mounting bolts. Cool. Good thick instruction manual. Got this. Ooh. It's a good thing it says do not eat. I was about to eat that. That looks yummy. All right. Guess what it is. You got two, three guesses. There you have it. Pretty cool. On off. Dongle goes there. Plenty of fans. Okay, so you got a filter on this side. There's your PV on off. Hmm. Oh, that's that's not your that's a EPS output. Hmm. Okay, cool. Oh. Look at that. Handles. Alright, let's see how this thing's gonna fit. Okay, well. Time to take this all down. So we're gonna cut the power, turn off the inverter, turn off the batteries. Pretty nice having breakers on the batteries. We'll turn off the BMS too. So that's all shut down. We'll test, we're testing for AC power. Of course it's gonna be off, but nothing there. Um, I previously turned off the solar. We'll double check that. Yep, we're good there. So, got no electricity. Yep. <laughs> All right, just start unhooking everything. Okay, I added more two by fours to the stand to make it strong enough to handle the weight of the new inverter. All right, this is a temporary setup. Uh, if you watched my previous video, it's because we're in the middle of a remodel. But this is uh, still going to be portable because I'm not sure where I'm going to mount this permanently yet. But we'll still power the house with this. Well, it's like this. But this this one weighs over twice as much as the other one. So we beefed this up. Now it's good and solid. I had some wiggle here, even with the 3000 on it. But good and solid. So we're going to start getting into the wiring and all that. Obviously, read your owner's manual before you start wiring anything up. Research all you can. Watch a whole bunch of YouTube videos. I'm not an electrician. I'm just a guy that likes to have power in his house. So I'm just going to hook this up kind of probably differently than other applications. Obviously, I'm not going to show you how to parallel because I'm only doing one unit. Uh, I'll probably make videos later because I do want to add more units when I put them in their permanent location. But of course, always be safe. You're dealing with some high electricity here. 240 volts and of course my PV is going to be coming in at like 300 volts so you definitely got to be careful make sure everything's off and use some common sense all right so got to get rid of all these unfortunately I don't have the pieces that go in here to hold your wires so I'm just gonna to have to go without for now but like I said this is temporary so we'll start with the battery cables so these are the cables that came with the 3000 and I don't have the connectors. This is what, how they came, but I don't have the connectors to 
go like that. So I'm using these because this is what I have on hand. Kind of out in the middle of nowhere, so you kind of make do with what you have. And then you want to torque those down. All your torque specs are in your user manual. Right, there's a battery communication cable. So this is battery one. I was just going to use the cable off the 3000, but they're actually different connections. So Okay, so that hooks up our batteries. Batteries off here. Time to start bringing in some AC power. Now we got all of our AC hooked up. You get your hot black, hot red, one side of your, this is one side of your 220. So you got 110 there, 110 there, there's your other side. Now half of it's, half of the 110 is going to this plug so I can plug my big tools in while we're doing the remodel. And the other half of the 110 with the black here going into this cord, which runs in and powers the house, which is power and uh, three deep freezers and a fridge all the time, washing machines, swamp coolers, all that kind of stuff is where that's going. I got my PV coming in here on the one side. Each side here, you got two sides. Each side's good for 4,000 watts and up to 480 volts. I'm running around 300 volts into here and about 2,000 watts of solar panels into the one side. So everything's hooked up, should be good. I've got the 220, two hot leads. Of course, I got all the neutrals hooked into this bus bar, all the grounds hooked to here. It's uh, the ground coming into the house. The house is grounded, so that's grounding everything here. There, I mounted my 220 plug right there on the side. So that makes it portable power, 110, 220 off the side of this. And I will put the cover on and turn it on. All right, let's turn this on. Start with our, turn on our battery BMSs. Now these would be 100% charged because they were all the way charged when we started. Turn on the battery. Um, let's turn on the inverter. Well, there we go. You're powering up. Now I did not hook up the grid because obviously I don't have grid. I'm too far up middle nowhere. For those of you who have grid, that's where you're going to hook up your grid. Generator, I haven't hooked that up because um, this is my generator cord. I've been charging this with a 110 generator. You need a 220 to charge with this inverter. So, but I haven't used a generator since I added more solar. So I might not even need that anyways. Okay, looks like everything's good. Let's uh, see what happens. We don't seem to have any power come out. All right, you probably stop recording. Okay, here we are. Three days later, we're up and running like we should. Here's the thing, we was doing our install on Friday and we got done kind of Friday evening. And then, as you saw, when I powered up, we had nothing. And so I did a lot of research, YouTubing, Googling, finding out stuff, trying to figure out what was going on. Because I had power here, DC, but the inverter just was not coming on. And the reason why is that there was no connection between the batteries and the inverter. And so after all my Googling and everything, couldn't find the solution, ended up calling customer support this morning. And so that's the thing, because it was over the weekend, I couldn't just call customer support. But uh, anyways, I, I did get into here and I just changed the settings to lead acid and we ran all weekend on the batteries and everything ran just fine all weekend on lead acid because we're getting power and everything, it's just not communicating it. But it's weird because if you put it on lithium, all of a sudden everything just shuts off because there's no communication between them. But if you run as lead acid, it don't care. There's power coming from here, it's gonna run, you're good to go. So by default, that's how we ran all weekend. So this morning, as soon as Signature Solar opened up, that's who I bought this from. Then uh, I called and talked to tech support, and I talked to Ethan G. He did an amazing job. Shout out to Ethan G. Lots of knowledge there. Usually I kind of avoid customer or tech support, that is, because I usually can find more answers on Google or, or YouTube and figure stuff out, but not with this. But within five minutes of talking to Ethan, I told him, you know, there's no communication. First thing he did is we go straight to the battery. That's when we went through this procedure right here, which he walked me through how to set the battery to Lux power so that the batteries communicating with the inverter now. So that was the problem. It was the battery. It wasn't the inverter. It was the battery was on the wrong setting. And that's with these new batteries, the BMS, all that computer stuff, you've got to get into this computer's got to talk to this computer. So it's not just raw power anymore. There's 
a lot more cool stuff in these. And so you just set it to Luke's, uh, Lux power and fire it all up. So when you fire these up, you got a whole uh, inverter startup and shutdown procedure here. So there's your startup procedure, there's your shutdown procedure on these. And uh, yeah, so within five minutes of customer su of tech support this morning, up and running. I mean, we was up and running before, obviously, in lead acid mode, but as soon as we did that, fired all up, all communicating like it should. You go here, and all the programming is done right here on the touch screen, so it's pretty easy. So after that, after I got all communicating there, then I hooked up the Wi-Fi dongle, and let's show you how that goes. Okay, so I've got the Wi-Fi dongle all hooked up, screwed on. You can see you got three lights on. That means it's working right. I gotta say, when we were installing this, these handles were definitely nice for doing that. So this is really easy, and then you go to your, um, you gotta download the EG4 monitor app, and then set up an account in there. So that was one of the things I wasn't able to do until this morning as well, because I did not have my customer code, and come to find out, customer code is super easy. It's just signature, capital S, signature, because signature solar. So that's your customer code. So this morning I set this all up as well. I'm really liking this app actually. It's pretty cool. It shows you our power coming into your inverter. Uh, my batteries are completely charged at this point, 100% charge on the battery, so there's no power going to them. But this is what's cool about this is look at this, you go down and it tells me that I've got two batteries. It automatically knows how many batteries, capacity of the batteries, the BMS limit charge. Uh, it's got all this information in there. And then this is really cool here too. Look at this. On the very bottom here, we got the line one and line two. This is telling you how much power is coming out of each leg of your inverter, which is pretty cool. So right now I'm only using the one leg at 321 watts. This is power in the house. So fridge, one fridge, three freezers, swamp coolers on right now. So all the power coming from the solar panels going directly to all that because the batteries are charged. And line one is just sitting at 15 watts. I think that's the idle consumption or something. But what we're gonna do here, we're gonna turn on a heat gun. Now this is the heat gun that I wasn't able to run on the 3000. And I think it's because there's the wiring in the house or combination, I was on a long cord. So they did take this heat gun and plug it directly into the 3000 and it ran it just fine. So it will, the 3000 will run it. So I'll go over to here. I'm going to hit refresh. Let that load in. You see that? Now all line one popped up. We're running 1,160 watts. So yeah, we got line one and line two running now. So yeah, that's pretty cool. As you can see, I've got Line one is just hooked to this three-way, so I can plug whatever I want into it. As um, all my power tools are going to go into this as I do the remodel. House and tools powered separately. I think that's going to help a lot on my power. And all right, let's see what all this thing can run. All right, there you have it. it no problem running this, which I think it was had more to do with wiring distance for something than anything else. But I'm going to try this on the three thousand again, closer to the unit when I get hooked up to the golf cart and we'll see if that is the case. But anyhow, you know, this is only 3000 Watts per leg. So we're only on 3000 Watt system. Ran it just fine. So now we're going to do the real test. We're going to plug in and try the welder. Well, here we go. The welding test. So I'm using this welder I bought from Harbor Freight. It can use either 110, use this or you can go with 220. So I've got it set to 220 with the switch here. We was on a big job in Salt Lake and the steel guys there doing all the steel on a great big multi-story apartment building. This is what they use, the elevator shafts everywhere. They're using these for everything because they like them, they're lightweight, they work well and they're really inexpensive. So you don't have your $5,000 welder out there. Anyways, let's go ahead and turn this on and see if anything works.
Okay, we've got the EG4 monitor app open. As you can see, line one is running around 1700 watts. Line one is just running the welder. Line two is running the welder and also the house. I did unplug the swamp cooler, but everything else in the house is not. Yeah, it's running really well with under 4,000 watts running this. So easy run it. Well, 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 this is awesome. We've got so many welding projects. Okay, so this is the generator I've been running the welder with, a Champion, dual fuel. I was running on propane when I was welding. It had run, run the welder really well, bogged down just a little bit, but good. The inverter ran it really well, really good heat, and really happy with it. It was under 4,000 watts with everything, the house on and welding, so really good. The golf cart here in the background is getting a lithium battery upgrade. That's what's going on with it. All right, I'm really happy with that weld test. That is awesome. I'm so excited to be able to weld every day. I bet I could weld one to two hours a day and still have plenty of power to power the house. It's so nice having just 220 right here, ready to go. You know, most of the time running the generator. What I don't like about the generator is you're running the generator, then sitting there running, burning fuel while you're monkeying around, moving stuff, doing stuff, and making noise. I just love stuff like this because it's only consuming power or giving you power when you're actually using it. So it's charging the batteries. If you're not using the power, put your stick to the metal and start welding. Now you're using power. Let off, talk to your friend. You'll have a generator just burning gas. Love this stuff. I gotta say the batteries, so impressed with lithium batteries. I, I'll never be able to go back to lead acid for never, ever, ever. <laughs> Love them. And this inverter, I just love all the built-in breakers and everything. You know, you got your PV disconnect and everything, all built in, so simple. You just hook it up. Software, I struggle with that a little bit just because it's new to me, but now that I've done it, I'll be able to do this so much faster, learning it. I'm really just gonna stick with mostly the same equipment, just learn it really well. There's a lot more settings I can play with, a lot more to do. You know, this thing will start your generator, there's a lot of settings on there I haven't messed with, so I, it's really cool. The value here is amazing. 20 years ago, this would have cost you four to $5,000 just to do what this inverter does. The technology now, amazing. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, all I can say is I'm so excited just to keep playing with it, doing different things. It's so tempting just to unhook the house and wheel this around doing stuff, throw it on the golf cart, the back of the truck and take around wherever you need 220. <laughs> it's pretty tempting, but it does need to power the house. So I guess I'll have to leave it here. So yeah, if, you, if anybody's feeling generous, use my links below when you buy anything from Signature Solar, I'll get a little kickback and that'd make me even happier. But we'll, uh, thanks everybody for watching and catch you in the next video.